What's going on guys? It's Saturday. We're talking tacos because it's been a discussion pretty much all week. And what would tacos be without tortillas? We're making corn tortillas real quick. And then I'll show you everything else we're doing. So this is that Korean style beef that I told you guys about earlier. And that was just a gochujang marinade. And what I got in here is some bacon grease, some masa harina, and a little bit of salt, a little bit of water. I'm going to stir this mostly with my hands until it's almost all combined because trying to get this shit off your hands is pretty annoying. And then we'll mix it with our hands, we'll portion it out. And then we'll be off to the races. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a couple different things today. I'm going to show you guys how to make, obviously, these tortillas that I've showed you guys a couple times how to make. But we're also going to make a vinaigrette. Because that is going to be for the topping, or our uh, vegetables that we have over here. So we're not going to do, you know, just onion and cilantro like a traditional taco. We're going to do a... Korean inspired taco and that top or that bottom round I'm sorry is uh, the beef and I used a jacquard which I will show you guys what it is in just a few minutes and it's just one of those tenderizing things we use and it helps break down that connective tissue that sinew of the beef and then in that gochujang marinade is some lime juice, some ginger, a lot of ginger, a lot of garlic, um, green onion, salt and pepper, and that's pretty much it. So, we're going to put these into one ounce portions. And that will be our taco. I'm only going to show you guys how to do a couple of these. And then uh, we'll get to the other things. So I've got my little scale off to the side. So I'm going to do like four or five of these. And you can always tell you have enough liquid in your masa when it's not sticking to your fingers anymore. Like I said, about one ounce portions. So what we're looking like for tortillas, it's actually perfect. So I'll do one more and I'm gonna put this off to the side. We'll talk about other stuff. All right. So we've got a dry preheated pan. I'm not gonna use the cast iron because I don't feel like using the cast iron for my marinated beef because there is a lot of sugar in there and I just don't want to have the chance of possibly scorching um, that pan and then having to start over and then scrub all that out. So we're going to use a non-stick pan but like I said I usually use a dry cast iron pan for my tortillas but I don't want to have to make and do a whole bunch of dishes after this. I've been doing house duty stuff all morning essentially so we painted our bedroom and I don't really want to have to do any more than I need to do. Right. So, that is our tortilla. Great. The other thing we got back here, because I like doing vegetables with everything, this is broccolini, broccoletti. A couple different names for it. Right. Um, so we're just going to blanch that off and then pick it up with a little bit of butter and Probably some chicken stock. You, know, you don't have to do chicken stock, but it makes everything a little better. If you're a vegetarian vegan, you can actually just go ahead and use, um, you can go ahead and use, let me turn on these lights. Oh, I guess that light is blown, so let me turn on a different light. So you guys can see what I'm working with. I like going about 30 seconds each side. This pan's already pretty hot. 
I like doing them twice on each side. Right. So like I said, this is our broccoletti, broccolini. And broccolini is generally a little bit more thin compared to this stuff. We're gonna work in batches on this one. And then blanching water, boiling hot salted water. And then usually you would shock it, throw it in some ice water right after. But as we're going to be using this, I don't really need to ice water it. So, like I said, these are almost done. I like to have just a little bit of brown on these, but they're gonna be brought back up when I put them in the fry pan. Because you always wanna you always wanna warm up your tortillas. You don't ever want to serve somebody cold tortillas. What I like doing with tortillas is I like throwing them in a towel just so the heat will continue to steam them on through. And I've found that it yields a better tortilla. So it's about where we want it. I don't want too much color because I do want these pliable and easy to bend. All right. So we'll go ahead and cover that. We'll go ahead and move off this broccoli so we know which one to cook and which one not to. You should be able to know just because of the color difference. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second because I'm going to put it side by side. And this is another thing shocking does or blanching does. Right? It brings all that chlorophyll. I'm not a scientist, but it brings all that chlorophyll, which is that green color, to the front. And I'll show you one by one, side by side. Right? So you can obviously see which one is been cooked some and which one hasn't. Right. Got a little broccoli in our tortillas right there. It's alright. So and then I'm probably either gonna pick this up, like I said, a little bit of chicken stock, a little bit of butter, or I might just throw it underneath the broiler, get a little char on it. Just depends on how I feel. Alright. So let's bring you back over here. Hopefully I'll remember enough to continually check on my tortilla back there because I don't want those burnt. And I'm gonna get rid of these comments. I will answer your questions very, very shortly. I don't ever not answer comments, questions, concerns, complaints, bitches, or gripes. I always get to them. You know, try to get to them as quickly as possible, but when you're cooking them, entertaining. You know, kind of got to prioritize. So, I wasn't going to bore you guys with more tortillas, but however, when I'm done with this video, I won't show you guys the whole setup because I'm actually waiting on my rice to finish. And all I did for rice was I put it in my rice cooker, and it's one cup dry, and then one cup dry rice, and then uh, I like doing one cup of water and just a hair over that one cup. Um, I feel like one to one, especially with jasmine rice is right about where you're at for a perfectly loose, light, fluffy rice. And that's where I like being at. Never had any issues with my rice that way. Um, you know, usually I would do some kind of fried rice with this portion if I was doing a standard Mexican taco or a Mexican kind of cuisine, but as I'm doing a more Asian or Korean inspired taco, this is what I'm actually gonna do. So, like I said, it takes about 30 seconds each side, and I do like popping them down there for another 30 seconds or so, you know, so three-sided taco, even though there's two sides, I like doing about 90 seconds in total, but it's going to be picked up again. And usually I add a little bit more fat to this, fat, got a real nice mouth mouthfeel to it, you know, helps it from being dry, but tortillas really should be a blank canvas. There should be seasoning, but it should have a blank canvas because it's just transporting all that flavor. So you don't want a super overpowering tortilla. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you after I clean off my board here, is I'm gonna show you a quick vinaigrette. Now, when I think of, you know, Korean or Asian, you know, food, cuisine, the first thing that really comes to mind almost all the time is the um, vegetables that they do. I got some really good ones. Now, I'm cheaping out or cheating out because you know, I don't really want to have to cut all of this shit. But um, I like taking 
a mixture of different vegetables. Now they have this stuff, I like taking these matched the carrots. And only because what I'm going to show you next, I didn't have a lot of carrots in. And I feel like the color plus the sweetness really helps bring this stuff out. This stuff, it's called broccoli slaw. Right? Broccoli, cabbage, and then they just do the same thing that they do with the carrots that I just showed you. And matchstick it out. Right? This is fantastic stuff. Great raw. You know, like I said, see that contrast with the red cabbage and the carrots and that broccoli. Right? So I'll show you guys how to make a quick, a quick uh, vinaigrette, and we'll be on to the beef. Now usually, you probably want to slice the beef into strips, but I like doing it this way, because usually with something like this, I'd want to grill. You know, nice char marks, everything like that, but last couple weeks, it's been very rainy here, so we have not been able to get our back patio, all the stone laid out there. And this is just rice wine vinegar. And we've got a little bit of sesame oil. Sesame oil goes a long way, so be very careful. All of it's gonna take experience. I'm not really gonna give you measurements here. When I do put up the recipe, I'll give you guys measurements. Um, but with this being what I'm doing now, I'm not gonna give you estimates. Right now, I'm just gonna to try to balance it out. So rice wine is generally sweeter than your, your rice vinegars are generally sweeter than a white vinegar, right? So if I need to, I'd add a little bit of, a little bit of sugar if it was too sharp, but I kind of want that, I want that punch, you know, that vinegar, not like a white vinegar punch, rice wine, like I said, sweeter, a little bit more mild, a little bit more uh, forgiving because I do have lime, I do got that fermented chili paste and the gochujang, the salt, the pepper, the ginger, the garlic. So I don't want anything to really take away. Perfect. I don't want anything to take away from that, um, from that gochujang. I want everything to complement each other. Right. And this is going to be our finishing. Like I told you guys before, Cut it a bias, especially whenever you do green onions. Go as thin as possible. You can go as slow or as fast as you'd like. Speed comes, you know, so it's important to get that technique down. You know, tuck your fingers. Be wary of your blade, never bring it above a knuckle, right? I'm not gonna cut all this, because I'm gonna use a little bit of that later. I'm actually gonna be making, um, for the first time ever, I've had, you know, hundreds, probably thousands at this point of these things. Um, I'm gonna be making, and if you're from that part of the world, excuse me, as you can tell, I've got the complexion of mayo. So whenever I try to pronounce a word specifically to a region or any kind of cuisine, I never do it with ill intent or malice if I mispronounce. I think it. I think it's pronounced Zhao Lao Bao. Probably completely fucked that one up, but I tried. And all it essentially means is a soup dumpling. Got my steamer, came in, so can't wait. I actually forgot our garlic. Usually I don't use this stuff, but whenever I'm making stuff like this and I don't feel like mincing a couple garlic, this is uh, outstanding to have. You can actually put ginger in here too, but I feel like I have enough ginger in all of my all of my marinade I don't really want that punch I just want that to be brought up just a little bit right so let's go ahead and go over I'll show you guys how I like doing this like I said usually I'd use my cast iron pan because it'll give it a nice crust it'll almost simulate you know being always check to make sure if this shit's hot before you take it away I never want to take a hot pan halfway across the room and as soon as you pick it up you squirt the shit out of yourself so it's always good to check before so cast iron pan would generally mimic um, the the char of a grill right so I would usually use that but like I said I don't 
feel like possibly scorching it on the pan, sugar and cast iron. Very pain in the ass to get off and redo, right? So I'm going in a dry pan. We're not gonna use tongs, we're gonna use our fingers, right? Cause I wanna get most of that garlic off so it does not burn, right? And like I said, I took the jacquard. Let me actually get my jacquard out and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. It's a little 15, 20 dollar tool depending on where you get it at. I just gotta find it real quick. And it's essentially a handheld blade with a whole bunch of different blades coming at a bunch of different angles. And I don't know where I put it, but I'm pretty sure I'll show it to you on the next video. But it's an outstanding tool. Huh, right in front of me. Look at that. What happens when you lose your eyes? Right? And this is what it is. The blades come up. The blades come up. And it's okay to have a little bit of that char in the pan. Like I said, there is a lot of sugar in this. But I want a nice char. These things are pounded pretty thin. And then I take this jacquard. And I beat the piss out of it. So it can... So it can be super tender by the time I'm done. I'm actually going to clean this pan because there's a little bit too much char in this. But with something like a bottom round, you really want to have high heat, quick heat, and as less time on that as possible. Because there is little to no fat in this. little bit of fatness and this high sugar content already. So the best method for this one is super heat, super quick, and watch it. Right? Well, like I said, you would just take this jacquard and you would hit it over meat. This works great with flank steak. Works great with flank steak. Works great with skirt steak. You know, skirt steak, depending on which one you get, I believe it's the outside that is more tender than the inside. But I might be wrong on that one. I always get them mixed up. Um, you know, so it's great to really break down, like I said, that sinew, that connective tissue, that intramuscular fat that's in there as well. Not a lot of fat in this, so it really helps breaking it down and beating it up. All right. And all I'm going to do after this comes out, like I said, it's really, really quick. Cut it up into pieces, throw it on a tortilla, and I'll show you guys one, but I'm not going to show you the final plating. Because like I said, there's a little bit more to everything that I'm going to do. So I want to get most of that liquid off, most of that garlic off. So, but what do you guys, let me see if I can't pull these comments back up. Just be chatting them. What are you guys eating for dinner tonight? Like I said, you guys see what I'm doing. I'm doing Korean style chicken taco. Or I'm sorry, a steak taco. So I'll finish this one and then we'll get on to that broccoletti real quick. Right. And that'll be pretty much it, at least for today. And I've done four videos this week, you know. Three of them have been, you know, a meal. And the other one was just showing you guys how to make and cure bacon. So this is another great one you can do with uh, skirt steak. I like using the flat iron steak with this one. But it's just all the places around me have not had flat iron steak to pick up and use. So we haven't had haven't had a chance to to use that. So kind of got to use what you got. But it's a great piece of meat to use for this, you know, especially with the addition of that lime, the vinegar that's in there from the rice wine. You know, everything that's really going into this it helps break it down and makes it very tender. That's what, I, that's what I want you guys to know. You guys can take, you don't have to have you know, a 
Porterhouse New York strip, you know, you don't have to have a expensive cut of meat, you know, for certain things. You could use, you know, more economical cuts of meat than a ribeye, you know, New York strip, stuff like that. You don't have to use these expensive ones. Yeah. You know, it tastes great. Mouth feels really good. You know. But you don't have to. You start learning to cook and you start mixing acids and sugars and salts and peppers and marinades. You know, you really start to see how you can take a, and I don't want to call it a shittier cut of meat because it's really not a shittier cut of meat, it's just a tougher cut of meat because it's on a it's on an animal that, you know, uses that muscle, you know, consistently and consecutively a lot more than other muscles, you know, say like a tenderloin tenderloin. We're not going to butter and chicken stock this. We're just going to give it a nice quick sear. Get a little salt and pepper action on this. Hit it with just a little bit of that vinegar. Uh, that vinaigrette, I'm sorry, that we just made. Maybe a little sesame oil just to bring it out, just to wake it up. So we want to get a nice little color on it first. Another thing I like doing with my rice, as soon as it's done, because this is a very, very old uh, rice cooker here for one, not very expensive either. Not very expensive either. So I like to take it out as soon as it's done. Like I said, all we want is a nice little shark because sitting in that water has done quite a bit of work for it already. When we blanched it, that's what you do when you blanch. You, know, you hard cook, pre-cook, soften it up. Now with vegetables, there should still be a crunch to it, right? Like if you want a mushy, you can go a little mushy. I like a bite to them. That way I know I didn't cook all the nutrients and all the vitamins out of it. And that's what you do when you cook stuff, see? That's a perfect sear right there on that broccoli. Right, so you just want, like I said, just a little char. Because these stems do have the tendency to be a little bit more, you know, unforgiving and very tough. Right. I'm going to throw a little bit of that vinaigrette in there. It smells great. And then what we'll do, we don't have any chicken stock either. So improvise. So we're gonna put a little water in that pan. Right? It's gonna deglaze everything that was left in there for one. And it's also gonna bring everything up. Let's see if I got any butter in this warm. Aha, no, that's not enough. We got a new stick of butter. It's gonna deglaze everything in that pan. So it's gonna bring all that fond up. And it's also going to put a little bit of liquid in the bottom of this pan. So when we add our fat, it's going to adhere to that. So you don't need much. For that size, it'll probably go, you know, a tablespoon or two. Start with one and see how it goes. Okay. There's going to be a little bit of liquid. Like whenever I add butter, and I start saucing everything down. I start bringing everything together. I like to kill the heat. There's a lot of residual heat left in this pan. Right, and I like to just shake it back and forth. Butter's going to start melting. That water's still going to be evaporating. So it's going to come together very harmoniously. Right. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to keep this off to the side because that's about done. I'll probably check it one more time just to see you know, where we're at as far as taste and this goes, but we're going to heat our, let me just wash this pan real quick, we're going to heat this pan back up, we're going to throw our tortillas back in here, get them a little warm, that's pretty much going to be it. So, 
turn this pan back on. I'm gonna bring you guys back over here. Because this is where the magic happens. If you guys are in your 30s, I'm pretty sure you remember cribs. They'd always take you into the bathroom, or I'm sorry, the bedroom. And they'd say, this is where the magic happens. All right, so I like doing, cutting into strips. Then I like taking just cubes. Little dice doesn't have to be perfect. Fucking taco. Don't overthink this. Yeah, tastes really good. Get this done. Wipe it off a little bit. It's not gonna be that big of a deal because I'm gonna be cutting more meat on it anyway. Uh, just a little bit anyways, so be all right. Let's go ahead and heat up our tortillas. Show you guys how we plate it. The taco portion, at least. I'm not gonna show you guys how to plate that other stuff because it's self-explanatory in my opinion. You know, put some rice on there, put the broccoli on there, and then just enjoy. So, like I said, I don't want to put too much color on these because I do want these to be pliable, but I do want them to be warmed all the way through. We'll get us a little bowl. We'll start the process. We're gonna take our broccoli saw, right? Broccoli, carrots, red cabbage. We'll take a little bit of our green onion that we cut on a bias. You're probably thinking, why do you cut it on a bias? It just looks prettier, more surface, looks better than just that standard uh, little rings that most people do. And then for this, we don't need much. It's just our plate that we're going to use. So we don't need much. If you don't like, you know, how raw these vegetables are, I think it, like I said, it breaks up the monotony of, you know, corn, corn tortilla, the punch of the meat. You can marinate this ahead of time, right? Where you just throw a little bit of this and then just leave it in the, the rice wine vinaigrette. Or you can actually salt all of this stuff too. A tablespoon of salt's worth. You know, really start bringing out that moisture. You get a softer carrot, softer broccoli, softer cabbage. But like I said, I like that crunch. Whenever, like I said, whenever I think of, you know, Asian flavors and Asian food, I always think of vegetables. I always think of that raw crunch. I always think of that, that vinegar. That's what I think of. Right. So we got a little plate here. And you can do it one of two ways. Usually, you never really want to hide your protein, right? Because that's generally the star of the show. However, the star of this show is a very ugly brown, right? So you kind of want to hide it, but you kind of don't. Because we're going to add a few things to this as well. We're going to add our broccoli slaw. Like I said, I don't have the comments pulled up, but if you guys have a question, please do not hesitate to ask. I'll actually go over some of the stuff with you guys and answer any questions, but I also like to go back. I got an avocado right here. Avocado are great. So you can do this one of two ways. What I like to do is I'm going for a presentation, which we're kind of going right now, right? I want to make it look as pretty as possible. I'm going to take this out. You just use a spoon, scrape all the sides, toss that away, pop them over. Right? I don't know about y'all, but I like a pretty decent cut of avocado whenever I'm eating tacos. Wait, there's more. You can actually dial it up a couple notches. Let's go. A little white sesame seed on both. But why stop there? We've got black sesame to seed too. That yin yang. That yin and the yin. And all this is going to do is add color, make it more visually appealing because like I told you guys 
probably a hundred times at this point now. I mean, I've been doing these videos and these posts since March. So you eat with your eyes first, right? Then you smell with your nose and all this other stuff. Let's add a little cotija, right? Cotija is just, in my opinion, like Mexican Parmesan cheese, if you will. Right? Goes great on almost all tacos. And a little bit more of this green, just to make it pop. And that's it, my friends. I'm glad you guys spent a little bit of time with me today. Showed you guys how to do a simple rice wine vinaigrette. Showed you guys again how to make tortillas. Showed you guys how to blanch and just saute a little bit of broccoletti, broccolini. So I'm going to actually turn that back on just so it heats up and sauces back out because usually when it cools down, it does have the tendency to kind of break away because all those liquids just start leaching out, right? That's been Korean style tacos with a little bit of Mexican style ingredients, just with the cotija and the corn tortillas. You know, Korean food and Mexican food, for some reason, they have a lot of similarities, you know, like cilantro, the peppers, the heat, and all this other stuff. So they pair really well together. Right? But I've got some people I got to cook for. Thank you for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. Check back on Monday. Don't know what I'm doing at all next week as far as food goes, so we're going to play it by ear. But just know it's going to be great. Know it's going to be fun. No, I can't wait to, well, you guys will see me. I can't see you. I see you guys in the comment threads and everything like that. And I appreciate it. Thank you for playing along with every taco versus, wing versus, pizza versus uh, thread that I've had this week. It's been really fun seeing what you guys like to eat and what I like to eat and what I like to make and what I like to go out and eat. That's been a lot of fun, so I really appreciate that. Um, keep interacting with as much as possible. Share this video. Share those posts. Share pictures of everything I do. But also, don't be afraid to send pictures to the page, man. I like seeing what you guys are cooking. I like seeing what you guys make. But it also goes to show you like how far you've come from a certain dish. Say these tacos, right? Take these tacos two months from now. I'm going to take this picture, post it on there. But I find some kind of new technique, new method of doing something. I find some new ingredient that I can incorporate all of this stuff I'm already doing back into this dish. You're going to see a before and after. You're going to see growth. And that's what we should all be striving to do with food. Grow. Get out there and try new things. Get out there and try different things. Try things that you probably wouldn't go and buy or try, you know, without hearing me talk about it, you know. Really get out there and try something new. Um, thank you again. Don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to share the photo I'll share later. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.